Hey everyone, this is Leah LaBelle, and you are here logged on to YouKnowIGotSoul.com. Hi right, Leah, so I kind of want to start at the beginning of your, um, you know, your career as an artist, and um, I know you got some attention when you were on American Idol, you were in the final 12 at one point years ago. Um, you know, what was that whole experience like, and um, what would you take from that as an artist, you know, for your career going forward? Being on American Idol at the age that I was, I was a lot younger, but I learned a lot from that experience. As a person as a, and as an artist, I grew a lot. I kind of look at it as a miniature boot camp for the music industry, because it was my first job. I was thrown in there. I was young. I didn't really know much about how it worked or anything, and I learned a lot about the business. I learned a lot about the sleepless nights learning songs overnight, getting prepared, being thrown in front of a camera, interviews, and it was so, it was a lot at one time, but I look at it as a boot camp and it actually did prepare me for a lot of what I do now. So it was a great experience. It helped me grow a lot. And I know, you know, years later you started recording some YouTube covers and, uh, you know, to kind of get attention. I actually spoke to one of my, one of my readers who mentioned one of your covers um, turned him on to Frank Ocean as an artist, so that was a cool thing. Um, just talk about, you know, what was your motivation for kind of doing those covers on YouTube? I actually started doing my YouTube videos because at the time MySpace was really huge and because I was on Idol, a lot of my fans from Idol kept writing me on MySpace asking me, are you still doing music, are you still singing? And so the only way at that time that I could think of to let them know was to start doing YouTube videos and just sing songs. You know, because I was recording and I was trying on my own to start putting music out, but in the midst of that there was silence from me. So I wanted my fans and the people who did support me from that time to still know that I was alive and I was still singing. So that's where the YouTube videos kind of came from. It was just more an outlet for me to sing and let people know that I was still doing music. And I was reading that eventually you kind of linked up with Kerry Hilson at some point and you know went on tour and did some background vocals for her. So, you know, how did that whole situation come about and you know what's your relationship like with her? A lot of my relationships that I have formed in the industry as far as background singing kind of came from doing YouTube videos. Uh, my first being which was actually Kerry Hilson. I sang Energy which was her first single and she saw me sing that and actually reached out to me um, through the YouTube and asked if I wanted to sing with her and so I got my first real gig doing that which was really awesome and I grew a lot you know being around her and her first process of her first album I got to learn a lot and just absorb and be around and be in the studio and learn the process of a new artist which actually I look back on now and it's pretty awesome to be able to be doing that for myself now. Right, so um, you know, recently you've come on the scene as kind of the protege of you know Pharrell and Jermaine Dupri. Um, how'd you originally link up with them? How'd you catch their attention? Once again, YouTube is the ultimate everything, and Pharrell actually saw my YouTube videos that I made, and he'd been watching for about two years. He says sometimes he says three, so we don't know. Maybe it was three, but a long time he was watching me make these YouTube videos and. One song finally made him feel like she's ready now for me to reach out. This is the time. This is the right time. And before he did that, he wanted to bring somebody else on board. He wanted to do kind of a special thing that he'd never really done before, but he thought of collaborating with a different producer. So he called Jermaine Dupri and told him to watch my videos and ask, you know, tell me what you think of this girl. So JD watched and called him back. I think like he said the next day and was like let's go let's do this and so JD actually reached out to me on Twitter and that's how it all happened although they reached out to me on YouTube a few days before but I didn't see those so YouTube and Twitter and social media and internet is amazing these days the things that you can do with that yeah you know what, what do you think it is about you that made them you know, catch their attention and, you know, want to work with you because there's so many artists, you know, trying to make it just like yourself, you know, putting videos on YouTube, you know, with the internet, it makes it a lot easier to get out there. What do you think it is they saw in you? I can't specifically say myself what it is that I think they saw in me on the YouTube videos, but when Pharrell and JD have explained it to me, they just said that it was something about the way that I looked in the camera and the way that I sang to the camera and the eyes that I gave and just the whole vibe was almost like I was performing to people instead of just my camera screen and that intrigued them a lot and they also really liked my voice but they said they always tell me there's a lot of people that do this but 
there was something about the way you interacted with the camera that made us feel like you were ready. And so that's what it was. I just I just sang and performed and did what I felt in my heart. So I can't specifically say what they saw, but that's what I've been told from them. Cool. It's the contrast, you know, of working with both of them because they both have such different styles and techniques. So right. You know, what's it like working with each of them separately and okay. how does it work for you? Working with Ferl and JD was so much fun. It's a blast and you know they are two very different people and two very different producers but they are both very hands-on. So whether I was in with Pharrell or whether I was in with JD it's always a conversation being had about what I'm going through or you know what are we doing today or how did we come about this idea and this concept or what do we feel like talking about today. It's, everything was hands-on. It was never nothing was ever thrown on me. They, there was no egos involved. So as different as they are musically they, they're very hands-on, that they're very similar in that way, and they also work well together, bouncing ideas off of each other. So whether we work separately or together, it was a lot of communication and a lot of love involved and passion involved in the project, but they still threw their own, you know, specific things about them as producers that make them Pharrell and J.D. And of course, you've got the single Sexify right now. You don't love that song, love the groove on that song. Just talk about the creation of it. Yeah. Sexify is my first single off of my debut album, and it was produced by Pharrell. It was actually the first song that me and Pharrell ever did together, the first record I ever recorded on the album, and we didn't even know, you know where it was going to go, but we were in the studio talking about the cosmopolitan girl and woman of today, and we came up with cover titles that you know the magazine had had over issues and issues and we wrote them on a board and kind of pick and chose the ones that made the most sense together and what it means to sexify and that's how we made the record just kind of that anthem for women girls how to sexify yourself how to make yourself feel comfortable and confident and happy and proud or how to sexify your man and make him feel good as well and that's kind of how it came about cool. Talk a little bit more about the, you know your debut album that's you're working on now. That we, what can we expect on there? My debut album is half and half, half Pharrell, half JD, solely, and um, it is set to release early fall. And it's just a really, really feel good album. It's a R&B pop album, kind of retro throwback feel, kind of like Sexify, um, but meets today. Four on the floor meets hip hop, pop meets retro. It it's just think sexify and that sets the tone for the whole album. So it just has that everybody get up and dance, feel good, feel good about yourself, have fun. Um, but everything still lyrically has a meaning. There's still a lot of depth to it. So it was like a feel good, real album. You mentioned it's half Pharrell, half JD. Is it still gonna have a flow overall, or is there two distinct sounds on there? Do you think? The album, even though it's half row, half JD, still flows because it wasn't like we sh they shut each other off and just went and recorded this is what I did, this is what you did, we come back together and here it is. Every time we would do a record it would get sent to the other person, listen, bounce ideas, and throw a little bit of that into this. So everything still goes, it still flows, obviously we, you know, we worked as a unit and as a team. But it's still, when you hear each record, you're going to know who produced it because they still added their own flavor and their own, you know, pieces of, of themselves into the records that make it Pharrell and make it JD. But it still flows very smoothly. Cool. Well, just to kind of wrap up, you know, I was reading your bio that although you were born in Canada, you kind of grew up and went to school in Seattle. You know, what was the whole music scene like there and how did it influence you? The music scene in Seattle is actually really cool. It's a lot of underground artists, a lot of underground hip hop artists actually, and there's a lot of jazz. Like there's this place called Jazz Alley that my mom used to take me to all the time. It's really cool. A lot of bands and artists would come through there and perform and they serve dinner and it's really cool. I went there a lot and you know, so just a lot of people, very talented musicians and, and artists there and I um also sang in a gospel choir growing up for a lot of my life and just experience going around the city and doing different events with them and, and growing up in that culture and that life was really awesome. I, I really did a lot in Seattle musically and it's a 
it's a really it's not just known for grunge and rock like you would think. There's a lot of cool music. Yeah. It's a good scene. And just you know, one last thing. I was on your website today and I saw a video you had talking about Seattle Supersonics and how it's just not the same now. You yeah. know, um, can you root for the Thunder? It's really hard for me to root for the Thunder. I can't be mad at them, the players, or you know, the team necessarily. But it is a heart wrenching topic for me because we had Seattle really has no more NBA team. They took our Sonics, so I'm really not rooting for anyone right now. I just okay. I love basketball, so I still watch. But at this point, it's just it's a sore subject. <laughs> so that's all we got. Anything you'd like to add? Um, just wanted to say my single Sexify is out now on iTunes. Download that, purchase that if you can. So excited for that to finally be here and available. And um, if you could follow me on Twitter, at Leah LaBelle, my Instagram is the same, and as is my Facebook.